Good to have you back. If you're like a lot of people in Las Vegas, you've been meaning to speak to an attorney about your real estate situation, but maybe you just haven't had that opportunity yet. Well, here's your chance to hear from a lawyer, as my next guest is Tisha Black. She's a partner in the firm Black & Labello here in Las Vegas. Tisha, come on out. How you doing? Great. Great to have you here. Thank you very much. Nice to know Mark. Nice to see you, Mark. Nice to see you, Tisha. And it's good to have someone here to talk about legal advice because so many people are getting it in the wrong places. They're talking to relatives who live in different states, uh, friends who have been through what appears to be similar circumstances. It's not always a good thing. It's not a good thing. Uh, information is key. And I think what's important, though, is information that's relevant to a particular borrower or individual situation. What I find a lot is that people who talk to their relatives in different states, um, the information is, doesn't relate. The statute of limitations may be different. The laws relating to contracts or creditors' rights may be different, and they vary from state to state. And even if you're asking your neighbor, who's obviously in the same jurisdiction, your particular cir circumstances differ. And therefore, the information that you need to be um, discovering is information related to your particular cir circumstance, not your neighbors or your parents or other relatives. Yeah, because what you're going to go through is going to be different. And it's going to be a process no matter what. It is a process. And I think um, people need to understand that the situation of trying to get out of your financially dis distressed property or restructure it is not an easy process. There's no silver bullet. And it, d it definitely does not happen in a day. It's not like buying a house or, an in or, or dealing an investment used to be. It, there's a lot of different contingencies that work into each solution. Yeah, and a lot of options, too. I mean, we, you can go through foreclosure, you can negotiate, there's, there's always bankruptcy, um, and it's important to understand what those options are. And each one of those options, although they may be uh, an option for each person, it's not necessarily a selection or a strategy that they should make. It depends on their particular financial circumstance. It depends on what their future goals are. It depends on how they hold their assets. It depends on uh, how they held the asset that they're trying to restructure. You can, um, there's a myriad of ways. Essentially, it boils down to three. Let me just make it easy. One would be to negotiate with your lender. The second would be allow a foreclosure to take place. And the third and obviously most drastic option would be a bankruptcy, to avail your ba yourself of bankruptcy protections. Um, in negotiating, there's a lot of different elements um, or, or programs that the banks have. You'll hear of things like deeds in lieu, deed in lease, uh, temporary modification, permanent modifications, on occasion a principal reduction. There's just a number of different um, strategies that you can employ, but it, it requires working with the banks. And sometimes the lenders aren't, are, are, are more reluctant. It depends on the lender and it depends on the person you get on the phone. Yeah, if you can get somebody on the phone, yeah, that's unfortunately. why it's good to have an attorney on your side. But foreclosure, you said, was the next option. So foreclosure, I think what a lot of people need to understand about foreclosure is that if, let's give the hypothetical that you have a first on your property and you have a second. There's two different statute of limitations that relate to each of those encumbrances, the first or the second, depending on who forecloses. So in our hypothetical, you have a first on your property and a second, and you've quit paying your payments on the first, and now the first has decided to foreclose. Okay? What happens in that particular situation is the second now is wiped out of the property. It's no longer a secured position because the first has foreclosed upon it. Yeah. Okay? But the second still exists, and I think a lot of people are under the delusion, unfortunately, that once a foreclosure occurs, that the second is no longer of issue anymore, and, and that's really not the case. You mentioned statute of limitations. It's important to understand that as well. It's key. It's key. In any breach of contract, the statute of limitations is six years from the date of the breach. And what the statute of limitations signifies is the non-breaching party's right to sue the breaching party. Okay, so let's just give another example. I owe you, or maybe you owe me, $200,000, okay? You want me to owe you $200,000. I want you to owe me $200,000. So you owe me $200,000 and you quit making a payment in March of 2010, mm -hmm. okay? Six years from then, 
I can no longer have the right to sue you for that breach, okay? I can no longer come after you for the $200,000. There's a key difference between that statute of limitations, which is six years, and the statute of limitations on a foreclosure, which is six months. But that six-month statute of limitations is only for the foreclosing lender. And the idea is that the foreclosing lender has now had the ability to collect the property and an asset, right, the house that secures it. Yeah. And they only have then a shrunken amount of time within which they can come after you for the deficiency if there is any. So it is. It's important to understand that and it goes back to what you were talking about, Mark, earlier in that every situation is unique. Well, just listening to what Tish is saying, that is so true. I mean, we deal with thousands of clients and I can directly tell you that they may be like circumstances, but no two circumstances are exactly the same. Yeah. And yeah. They're different. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's true and I, I, that brings us back to our original point. I, I've been um, practicing in real estate for 15 years and I have not once seen a, a repeated set of facts with any client. Um, and even the same client in different loan situations, you know, if the, it depends on who the lender is and it depends on how, where they are staged and how they hold their assets. You know, I, I've, one, of the, one of the things I would like to caution everybody against is that if you have an estate plan or you have a retirement savings, you really need to seek counsel before you start dipping into those things in order to perform under, uh, under another contract. Um, because the law affords you protections that a lot of people are not even aware of. Tisha, it is, it is so good to hear these things, and we're going to be talking to you more down the road. We thank you for being here today. Thank you. And, uh, Mark, you and I are going to talk about some more uh, situations and, and the uniqueness of everybody's circumstances when we come back. We'll see you in just a few minutes.